afternoon, parents, family members, and our noble guests who are here with us in the chapel, and those who are watching from elsewhere. You are very welcome. We are very happy to have here for you a Hillcrest School Christmas tradition, the elementary school's Christmas program. As we have all been going through our daily tasks and going around town, visiting our friends, visiting our, the shops that we have to go to, we are finding, and also into our houses of worship, we see that it is looking a lot like Christmas. Even the beautiful decor of the chapel attests to that. And including the highlight that we always have of the manger here in the front, the manger being the model of the setting of the very first Christmas. And the baby who was born there is the very reason that Christmas is even a thing. Let me read from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Can we pray together? Dear Heavenly Father, the God of all that we see and hear and experience, the one who created the universe and created us, we thank you for bringing us this far today and to have this opportunity to remember the miracle of Christmas once again through drama and song. We are so very grateful to know that Jesus became a baby that first Christmas in order to save us from our sins. The guilt and shame we feel from the wrongs that we do intentionally and unintentionally are gone as we walk in belief and faith in the one who saves us. Come, Lord Jesus, as you came that first brightly lit night to be our Emmanuel, God with us. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Okay, at this time I'd like you please to silence your phones. And after the first set of songs, there will be a chance to come up and take pictures of our first through third graders. Afterwards, you can take pictures from your seats. Other photos can be snapped after the production is complete. Please also note that the art room will be open afterwards to be able to see all the more of the creativity of your kids through their art projects that we've done this semester, or that they've done this semester, not me. <laughs> so Mr. Charles Dake has been with us in the elementary, as an elementary music teacher just since August, but he's already made a significant impact on our, in our Christmas program, in our music program. His past experiences, love for music, and love for children, along with his skills on the piano, have opened up the world of music in new ways for your children. He's a mean piano tuner, and he's put together this program for you tonight. Please help me welcome Mr. Charles. Good evening, dear parents, staff, students, and invited guests, and also the Hillcrest community. Compliments of the season. I cheerfully welcome you to an annual Christmas concert tag, Heavenly Christmas Gift. I'm thrilled to stand before you as an elementary school music teacher. Tonight, our talent and our talented students will share the merriment of this season. May the music fill your hearts. May the melodies linger in your heart. And may the festive season bring joy 
and ever joy in our hearts. Sit tight and enjoy all the sets of blessings we have for you. It's a ministration and a performance. Stay blessed as you listen.
Well done, boys and girls. Thank you for your message. So we're going to go on to numbers two and three in your, actually goes from two to four in your program. So now is the time for parents to be there. Welcome to come up and snap photos. We'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Then afterwards, the um, third and fourth will join us on stage and we'll all stand to sing the 12 days of Christmas, followed by a solo performance by Josie, the charity song. So go ahead and take a couple minutes for snapping photos if you'd like. You may come forward. Just like we do for the kids, I'll give you five, four, three, to return to your seats, two, oh, Pastor Nare. <laughs> Alrighty, third and fourth, come on up.
Charity suffers long. Charity is kind. Charity envies not. Tis not perfect. share with you happened a long time ago welcome one and all to a tale of wonder and merriment set in the little town of Nazareth during the most anticipated time of year our journey begins with a young maiden named Mary known for her kind heart and unwavering spirit who one day was going about with her chores was confronted by a wonderful visitor. Oh, hello there. I'm getting ready for the most wonderful time of the year. Green. 
Greetings, favored one. Brace yourself for some divine news. Whoa, what's happening? Just your friendly neighborhood angel with some big news. You're about to be the star of the show. Really? Fear not, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. His name shall be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. Oh, but how will I tell Joseph about this? Well, I'll do as the Lord has asked of me. Yes, welcome Mary. I was even on a plan to get you informed that I have to leave for Bethlehem for the census. I'm not sure when I'll be back. Joseph, I have something to tell you. It's rather, well, extraordinary. Extraordinary? What's going on? Joseph, the angel spoke of a child, a special child, to be born of me. He'll be called the Son of God. The Son of God? How can this be? I don't have answers, Joseph, but I believe in the angel's words and the divine plan unfolding before us. Well, this wasn't on the carpentry plans. Let's roll with it. We will trust in God's plan, and for this reason, Mary, we will go to Bethlehem together, no matter the uncertainties that lie ahead. together. We will trust in God's plan.
Mary, full of grace and faith, embraced the extraordinary condition she was in, knowing that God had chosen her for a special purpose. <laughs> Mary and Joseph began their journey to Bethlehem as God's plan continued to unfold. Though Mary and Joseph set off on the adventure with more detours than a lost traveler with a faulty GPS. Ha! Huh. I thought traveling to Bethlehem would be a piece of cake, but it's more like a piece of hay. Mary, we need shelter soon. I'm getting concerned for your current condition. Hey, you are both welcome. Well, it's not the rich spot. It's the only five star of Bethlehem. Can we have a place to settle for the night? No, Rumadine. Why does everybody choose tonight's travel? Well, there's a stable at back. It's not much, but it's got a rusty charm. Aw, uh, where will we go? Wait, I'm not sure. I think I have an idea. You can stay in the stable. It's not much, but it's warm. Joseph, I don't care where we sleep tonight because you can't withstand how I feel right now. Well, it's not the fluffiest mattress, but it'll have to do. Maybe we should consider starting a stable themed bed and breakfast after this. Ah! Ah! I guess the baby is coming! Never mm. can be so painful! Yes. The stable. The stable, while not the most conventional of conditions, had a charming appeal that even the resident animals found pleasant. Mary did have a son, just as the angel foretold, but the small town of Bethlehem was extremely crowded that night. Can you imagine staying in the stable with the animals, with her and Joseph? As the angel said to the shepherds nearby, this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in a swaddling cloth, laying in a manger. Though with the animals and the discomfort, Mary and Joseph found a humble stable where Mary gave birth to baby Jesus.
know mom and dad had to travel a long way just to give birth to you and you're still the best Christmas gift ever. What on earth is that? Maybe it's the grand opening of the first ever Celestial Bakery. Oh, can you imagine Celestial Pastries? It must be out of this world. <laughs> or perhaps it's the ship's way of telling us we've been neglecting our stargazing duties. They are trying to teach us astronomy, one twinkle at a time. <laughs> well, if sheeps are giving us lectures on consolation, I'm officially retiring from shepherding. Or maybe it's a sign that we should expand our business into the celestial market. Shepherds start gazing towards, see the stars with the pros. And here I thought that our only job was to make sure the sheep don't get lost. Who knew we were going to be experts at cosmic phenomena too? Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. <laughs> well, that's one way to steal a spoiler from Celestial Bakeries. Are you an angel? You got it, and there's a special delivery on its way, and it's destined to change everything. A special delivery? Does it come with a side of cosmic cookies by any chance? Even better, it's a gift that lights up the whole world. You want to see this for yourself, trust me. Don't worry, I won't buy it. I'm just here to deliver some heavenly news. There is more to this night than you can imagine. Keep your faith strong. Rejoice, for unto you this day, in the city of David, a savior is born. Glory to God in the highest!
While the shepherds pondered the possibility of intergalactic bakeries, the celestial choir performed the rendition of joy to the world that could rival even the most enthusiastic shower singers. As the night grew darker and the stars shone ever brighter, three wise men from east saw a brilliant star in the sky and were filled with a sense of wonder. They knew this celestial beacon would lead them to a humble stable in Bethlehem, and so they embarked on a journey of great significance. Meanwhile, in Bethlehem traffic, the wise men are still following that star. I hope they have good GPS. Look, a bright star! I told you we should have brought sunglasses. Let's go see what's happening. We have followed this star for miles. It will definitely lead us. I'm starting to wonder if we should have asked for directions at the last town. My sense of direction feels more like misdirection at this point. According to this map, we should have reached our destination two deserts ago. Did someone switch our map with a maze puzzle? I never imagined the road to divine prophecy would involve so many detours and uncertainties. How do we keep our faith strong if the path seems so unclear? Because our belief in star guidance is stronger than any doubt, we may be wary, but our faith in this journey's purpose keeps us going no matter what the obstacles. You're right. We didn't come all the way here to turn back now. We keep our eyes on the star and our hearts set on the promise it holds. We're getting close, sir. I can feel it. The star is leading us to him. The Magi, following the guidance of the celestial star, arrived at the grand palace of King Herod, where they shared their quest to find the prophesied newborn king of the Jews. Little did they know that their visit to stir a ripple of intrigue and concern throughout the land as Herod's heart concealed motives far from noble.
find out where this so-called king of the Jews is. I have a kingdom to run, and this star is still in my spotlight. You are a king. Perhaps you could... We'll get right on it. Perhaps you could launch a line, King of Jews, Starship merchandise to capitalize on the trend. Good. And while you're at it, make sure to take care of any potential competition. I, I, won't, I, I, won't let, I won't tolerate any threats to my throne. For your, your majesty, you don't mean surely not the children. Especially the children. We can't have, I won't let any so-called king of the Jews steal my legacy. Send out the decree to eliminate all male children under the age of two. We can't have any challengers sneaking up on me. But my king, isn't that a bit extreme? What about the innocent families and their little ones? Innocence means nothing when it comes to power. I'll stop at nothing to protect what is rightfully mine. God. Yes, my king. Go, make it happen. Attention, forward, march. The advisors reluctantly bow and scurry away to carry out her ruthless decree. Their expressions, a mix of fear and uncertainty, as they grapple with King's merciless command. Escaping from King's herd radar, the Holy Family navigated a series of misadventures that will make even the most seasoned travelers question their navigation skills. be the palace we're used to, but we'll be just fine for tonight to meet up with good news. At least the cameras will have some company, and I appreciate the scenery too. to bring hope and salvation to the world. Our journey has led us to the birth of a king in the humblest of settings. Our gifts may be inferior to the magnitude, in comparison to the magnitude of this moment, but we offer them with gratitude and reverence for the role this child will play in the tapestry of human history. The wise men 
upon reaching the humble stable, presented three precious gifts to the newborn child, each laden with profound significance. Gold, a symbol of kingship and wealth. Frankincense, a symbol of divine and spiritual significance. And myrrh, a symbol of sacrifice and mortality, all offered in honor of the blessed child. It was a great night, and indeed a silent night, where hope is restored unto mankind, came as a poor boy, yet the greatest of all, and the most high. Ladies and gentlemen, please make welcome the special extra friends who couldn't agree to stay back after receiving the good news. I hope the baby likes my gift. It's the biggest one I could find. Thank you. I have, I have, Oh no, I couldn't find anything unique or expensive for baby Jesus. <laughs> wow, never have you thought like that. After all, there wouldn't be anything special to offer Jesus more than our hearts. He owns silver and gold. There you go, baby Jesus. And so, on that holy night, in a humble stable in Bethlehem, the world received its greatest gift, Jesus the Savior. May we all remember the true meaning of Christmas and the love and the hope it brings. Merry Christmas to all! Merry Christmas!
Let's join the kids together with standing up and singing joy to the world together. It's been such a joy celebrating Christmas or the beginning of it with our elementary school fifth graders. You did an amazing job bringing it in. So could we have a round of applause for our fifth graders? And although we have songs and little funny jokes, which are good, the most important thing is that the hope of Christmas was in Bethlehem and is here in Joss. And that's the important part right there. So thank you, Elementary, for leading us into the Christmas season. And now for parents, um, the, the children will be dismissed to their classrooms and you may pick them up there. And then um, I, I ask that you go to the art room because um, we have an amazing art show from all the works that your children have worked on um, during the school year so far. And one of the, the joyous things I like to see is you see like their first self-portraits and then you see where they are now. And it's like, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Um, so let's have a word of prayer and then the elementary kids will be dismissed with their teachers and parents we will remain in place until they go out um, and then you can follow and pick them up there okay let us pray dear jesus our heavenly father our king of kings you have created warm spots in our heart this season time even if we don't feel it you give us joy you give us hope you give us peace Thank you. We cannot love you enough. In Jesus' name, amen.